this is Largo and welcome to Largo's Lair. Today we're going to take a look at the Headless Horseman made by the wonderful guys over at Four Horsemen Studios. This is one of their rare figure obscura figures that they do a few times a year and I almost missed out on this. I uh, didn't catch it when it went up for pre-order but thankfully the guys over at Helidote Toys happened to have one and I was able to purchase that. So let's take a look. Obviously the box art from the front is beautiful. They really did some super detail on this. And of course that it continues on onto the side where it gives us, you know, the write-up about the horseman himself. And of course, if I can move back a little bit, because this is a big box, you get the four horsemen logo there. And their details, which are just amazing. This is such a beautiful display, just the box itself. And then, of course, this continues on, onto the back, where you have this beautiful picture of the horseman with a flaming pumpkin head getting ready to terrorize Ichabod Crane or whoever else comes across his path. And then Figure Obscura at the top here, which is, you know, kind of their subline for these special products. One of the neat things about this packaging is that the whole front is magnetic and when it comes off you have a display piece. So you can use this as a screen to put behind some figures and I'm going to try it out with some toy photography. I think it's a really good backdrop, the colors are great kind of evokes some of the old uh, stories of the horsemen. So that is pretty cool. Next we'll see what's in the box. So as you can see, the horseman is well packed. He's been strapped and put in all kinds of protection, so he came in pristine order. Now I'll do a little bit of surgery and get him out of his plastic bondage. Oh, I just want to mention that on the inside of the package, there's yet another piece that you can use for toy photography. Another beautiful display, kind of a sunset look. And I think I'm going to have some use for this for doing some fantasy scenes. So give me a second and I'll get him undone from his package and we'll take a look at the horseman and his horse. Beautiful figure. A lot of great detailing on the leather studded uh, surcoat. He's also got some added bits and ports here like a lot of Mythic Legions so if you wanted to add some freaky bat wings which are available and uh, you know some of the other accessories from other Mythic Legions they are compatible. He does come with a cool collar that is attached and a cravat or neckerchief that uh, has a little pop of color there, some purple to go with that uh, menacing jack-o'-lantern that he wears when uh, he's looking for his head. Some great menacing uh, hands there. A couple of other hand attachment uh, options. So right out of the gate he's just a great design. Looks good. Has everything that you would want for a horseman figure. Uh, they really knocked it out of the park with this guy. You know, the articulation is your typical Mythic Legions, so ball joints where they need to be, uh, good articulation for everything he needs, and because he is a horseman, he definitely has the articulation in the thighs to be able to ride a horse, which some figures don't. Good uh, pivot at the foot, so you can get him into the stirrups. He's even got some nice uh, uh, leg armor there to go with the uh, the you know horseman rider look it's just you know some pieces that are probably reused from other mythic legions but the way they've put it all together it looks like a very unique figure now he doesn't have a scabbard to go with his sword but what he does have is a slight spot here on the side where you can slide the sword in I'm sure there's some technical term for that that somebody knows but it's a place to hang your sword 
that's what it is. So when he's riding, he can have his sword there and, uh, you know, bring it out when he needs it. Typical Mythic Legions style of detailing on the sword. And I think we've seen this before with some other figures. But uh, really nice, you know, just looks nice. Nice uh, paint job on it. Nice detailing. His other accessories are a little interesting as well. He comes with an optional neck piece, so if you don't want to have the jack-o'-lantern for his head, you can actually remove the jack-o'-lantern itself with a little bit of effort, which is just a cool pumpkin piece that you can use for, you know, figure photography in some other form or fashion if you wish. Um, if you remove this post, you have a spot for this to actually fit in into the neck. And now you have a truly headless horseman with a rather grotesque spot where his head should have been for even more creepy menacing looks. Definitely get some cool photography with that. The other option that he has for a head is a flaming pumpkin. Oh, I should mention too, if you do use this piece, it is tricky to get it back out. It's hard to get a finger on it or a thumbnail or what have you, so I might have to get a tool to pop that out, which I'll do off camera here in just a second. But we'll go ahead and talk about the rest of his accessories here while we're looking at it. If I can get him to stand up straight and be creepy in there. Yeah, stand right there. So, the other option he has is a flaming pumpkin head, which has kind of a translucent flame effect going off the back. Flames coming out of the eyes. Super, super cool. And you'll notice there's a hand here. Well, that's because one of his hand options actually has a ball attached to it, so you can literally attach the head to the hand and pose him with the pumpkin ready to be thrown. So he is a pumpkin chunkin kind of dude. That is a very cool accessory, kind of a attention to detail there. Four horsemen, they're always coming up with something. So that is neat. And of course, like I said, you can use this as a standard head as well. I'm um, not sure how great that's going to fit inside the collar, but I think it'll work. Let me get him here in, in camera. Yeah, that's going to work. Oh yeah, that's going to look good. So, the two pumpkin heads, the severed head uh, with just the collar, and then his only other accessories are a couple of other hand options, which we have for holding the reins or the sword for either hand. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They're rain or sold, uh, rain or sword holding hands. Say that five times fast. But great accessories. So we've got one, two, three, yeah three, four different hand options when you count the one that will hold the pumpkin. And of course the optional neck piece if you want to use the pumpkins or the, uh, the severed head piece and the sword. One other thing that he has which is a really super cool addition is a actual cloth cape or cloak. It's two colors. It's nicely sewn. has a really cool chain to hold it about his uh, neck area. And that will fit pretty well. You have to maneuver it a little bit to get it around this wide collar. But it'll work. Just be patient and be careful not to stretch out where the chain is attached. But once you get it on there, I guess you could put it under the cravat, but uh, man, that looks good. That just looks good. Gives him that very dramatic look. It is a wired cape, so there's wire in the sides and in the bottom. 
so you can definitely get some posing going there. I suppose if you didn't want to use it with your horseman, that would also make a really good cape for Dracula, if you happen to have a Dracula in your collection. So, definitely completes the look of the horseman figure. So, it does make him a little precarious until you get him adjusted right, but yeah, yeah, that looks really good. I'm liking that. So again, really great figure, very striking. Uh, the colors are awesome. Even though it's mostly black, the, the combination of the red interior to the cape and the purple cravat just gives it that little pop that it needs. There's even a little bit of detailing on the uh, belt. There's a little spot of color there. So, well done guys. I'm really, really impressed with this. So here's a horseman getting ready to lob his flaming pumpkin head at some poor victim. But what good is a horseman without a horse? Fortunately, the four horsemen thought of that. So let's take a look at the included uh, nightmarish steed that... I'm not sure if the horse has a name. I bet somebody could tell me. I'm not super up to date on the lore, but this is the horse. Of course, of course. And very nightmarish. As you can see, he's, you know, all black, super detail, red eyes, really nicely done uh, saddle with some detail and again subtle color I mean there's a lot of black on black here but there's also some subtle brown leathers and almost a purplish color to the uh, saddle blanket underneath and the hooves are glowing hell red from traipsing about in the uh, netherworld I suppose but just really nicely done. It's the same buck as the horses we've seen from Mythic Legions before. So again, same uh, detail as far as articulation, but just done up in a very menacing, uh, un, you know, not quite undead, but ghostly way. Even got a uh, nasty looking, uh, Grimace, or nay, as you would say, I guess, for a, uh, a horse. The horse uh, also comes with one other kind of unusual accessory, which is a optional mane. So we can pull this piece out, and then we can change his mane and get that underneath his bridle. Pop that in. It kind of just goes into a ridge here. And a little bit of adjustment, but you get the idea. If I can do that, there are some posts right there. Okay, now we're cooking. The trick is to get the bridle up out of the way so that when you put it on, Everything fits where it's supposed to be. And then, it's a little tricky to do on camera, but... Uh, yeah, you get the idea. So when you get him galloping in a action pose, you have a flowing in the wind kind of mane. And then you've got your standard standing there, getting ready to do something dastardly kind of mane. So. Again, very cool, beautiful horse, great detail, great articulation. So, we've seen the horseman, we've seen the horse. Now, let's see how they look in some toy photography. <laughs>
right, so final thoughts. The Headless Horseman is awesome. It's a great figure. It was a good choice by Four Horsemen to put it into Figure Obscura. He's got a lot of lore. You know, everybody knows Sleepy Hollow and the story of Ichabod Crane meeting this bad guy. Um, he fits with your monster stuff. He fits with your Halloween theme stuff, if you're into that. He is beautiful, obviously, in toy photography. Easy to set up. The cape is very dynamic. The flaming pumpkin head, as well as the, you know, standard pumpkin head, uh, really gives him a very dramatic and iconic look. So, I got nothing bad to say about this one. Uh, it's a little spendy, but you get what you pay for. It's well done. You're getting a great horse, great horseman, and I think it's definitely one of the best figure obscurus since they've started doing the line. So hope you enjoyed this and uh, let me know if there's something else you guys want to see. I'm always reviewing the weird and fantastic and this definitely qualifies. So see you later.